today's tutorial we're going to make this patchwork slouchy bag this bag is about 15 inches wide and 14 inches long it has one zipper pocket and three slip pockets also a little slot to put your lipstick or your pen we're going to make this bag out of charm packs or the 5 inches squares pre-cut fabrics and if you want to have the cutting diagram for this project you can go ahead and download that in the PDF uh, format I will link down below in the description box so without further ado let's get started for this project you're gonna need 34 pieces of charm pack these are 5 inches squares pre-cut fabrics that usually comes in a set of 42 for the exterior shell of the bag we're gonna use 28 pieces of the charm pack I like to separate the darker print from the lighter print first to make each black looking somewhat contrasting next we're gonna cut these charm packs in halves so I like to do five at a time so I'm just gonna stack five pieces of charm pack then I'm gonna take my ruler here and measure in two and a half inches then I'm gonna cut them with a rotary cutter so you want to go on and cut all your 28 pieces of charm packs in halves now you want to take one of the dark print and one of the light print and sew them with quarter inch of seam allowance then you will end up with 28 pieces of half charm pack blocks Then you wanna set and press the seam with an iron. Next we're gonna work on the front exterior shell of the bag. Lay 12 pieces of your blocks in 3 rows, just like what I'm showing you here. Obviously you wanna choose your favorite blocks for this because this is gonna be the front and it's gonna be the one that is exposed more often. Then we're gonna start piecing this one row at a time. You're gonna use quarter inch of seam allowance throughout the piecing. And then as always you want to set and press the seams. Once all the rows are sewn, we're gonna piece these rows together. We're gonna start by piecing the first row and the second row. You want to try your best to have the seams uh, match or nested together but don't stress yourself too much if it doesn't turn out perfectly because once you quilt this and assemble the bag nobody will even notice it then you want to give this a quick press as well alright now take another four blocks and piece them together then you want to take your ruler and rotary cutter and cut this piece in a half. Take half of the strip and lay it on your front exterior piece here, just like so. Then you want to go ahead and piece them together. Alright, so here is the front exterior piece is done. Now you want to go ahead and work on the back exterior piece exactly the same way. So here is my front piece and my back piece are ready to go. The next step is going to be quilting so go ahead and sandwich this piece with the quilt batting and the quilt backing or you can also use fusible fleece if you don't fancy quilting so here i've got my front piece already sandwiched with a quilt batting and the quilt backing so the backing fabric here is going to act as the interlining so here's my front piece already quilted and the edges are already trimmed I quilted this piece with the diamond shape and I think it's looking so pretty alright so once your front and back pieces are quilted and ready to go it's time to set this aside and work on the pockets and the lining we're gonna work on the slip pockets first so take your front and back slip pocket pieces and place them right side together sew the top and the bottom here with half an inch of seam allowance all right once you've done sewing you wanna go ahead and press the seam open i like using my seam roll here 
turn this piece inside out and then you want to top stitch on the top side here measure in five inches from the left side here and then you want to take your fabric marker and draw a straight line then you want to place your pocket piece on top of your lining piece four inches away from the top you want to make sure to line up the left end of your pocket piece with the left end of your lining piece then you want to go ahead and sew along that line here I've sewn my first pocket already now we're going to do the lipstick slot now bring the end of your right side of the pocket piece and make sure it line up with the right side of your lining piece and pin that in place you want to take a ruler here and measure one quarter inch away from the first pocket stitching line then you want to mark it with a fabric marker both the top and the bottom as well then you want to draw a vertical line connecting those two marks and that's going to be your stitching line now from that line that you just draw you're going to measure five inches again you want to draw a vertical line and that's going to be the stitching line for another two slip pockets the next step will be to stitch on these two lines that we've just drawn um, so I'm just going to take a pin here to keep that extra fabric on the other side you want to pinch both sides in creating a pleat here and then flatten that out then you want to use a couple of pins to hold the pleats now you're gonna go ahead and sew across the bottom here with 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and you're gonna end up with something like this now we're gonna set this aside and work on the zipper pocket take one of your zipper pocket piece with your ruler and fabric marker as well we're going to draw a nine by half inch rectangular shape so you want to measure an inch and a half away from the top and then center your ruler then draw a nine inch horizontal line then you want to measure down half an inch and draw another horizontal line and create that rectangle shape just like so then you want to draw another horizontal line right on the center of this rectangle once you've done that you want to draw diagonal lines right on these corners right here they're about 3 8 of an inch so you want to create that little triangle on the corner there and do the same with the other side then you want to end up with something like this I actually did a little bit of mistake so what I should do actually I should have drawn my rectangle on the wrong side of this zipper pocket piece but I did it on the right side instead it's not a big deal though but uh, if you guys are gonna draw yours please make sure to draw it on the wrong side about two inches away from the top just like so then you want to use a couple of pins here just to keep this in place then you want to sew all along the outer lines of this rectangle then we're gonna cut through this center line here so I want to start with my seam reaper first to get started and then I'm going to take my scissor and continue cutting once you've got to the corner here cut those diagonal lines as well but be careful not to cut through the stitches and we're going to do the same with the other side now you want to turn your lining piece to the wrong side and then you want to open these cutting lines finger press that little bit then you want to go ahead and give this a quick press 
Once you've pressed this, you want to go ahead and turn this pocket piece to the wrong side. Smooth everything out and then you want to go ahead and give this a quick press to make it nice and neat. Alright, now we're going to install this zipper. As you can see here, that my zipper is a lot longer than what I intend to be for the zipper pocket. But it's okay because this is a nylon zipper, we can always trim this off. Now you want to take your wash away wonder tape. So we're going to use this tape to base the zipper onto the lining piece. And you don't have to worry, you can sew through this and it's not going to be a problem. This is something that quilter usually use. Um, this is basically a double sided tape. If you've seen any of my back or purse tutorial, you may notice that I always use this. Um, for installing zipper So you want to cut two pieces of this obviously it should be about nine inches You want to place this right on the edge of your zipper just like so and Do the same with the other one then you want to peel off the paper here Unzip the zipper to where you want it to start then you want to lay this lining piece on top of the zipper just like so. Smooth everything out and then now we're gonna go ahead and sew this all around. I like to use my walking foot to work on my zipper. However, I move the needle all the way to the left first. You may also use a zipper foot if you have one if that's what you prefer. Once you've got your zipper sewn, if you're like me, you have your zipper a lot longer, um, go ahead and trim that off. Now you want to take the other pocket piece and place it right side down, just like so. Then pin that in place and you're gonna go ahead and sew this all around. And voila, you are done with the zipper pocket. Now we're gonna move on and work on the magnetic snaps. This one right here is called the female part of the magnetic snap and this one is the male part and these two are the washers. We're going to attach the female part for the back side of the lining while the male part will be on the front side of the lining. I'm going to show you here how to work on the female first. So here is my back lining piece, the one with the zipper. I'm gonna turn this to the wrong side. Take a ruler and a fabric marker and you just wanna put this pocket piece away for a while. Measure down 2 inches from the center top here and mark that with a dot, just like so. Then you want to cut a couple scraps of interfacing. They're about an inch and a half squares roughly. Then you want to go ahead and fuse that on here, right where you put the mark. So here I've done fusing my interfacing and I redid the mark because it was kind of fading. I forgot to mention that you also need to mark on the same place on the right side of the fabric. Now, you're gonna take your washer and place it so that center hole of that washer will sit right on top of that uh, dotted mark, just like so. Then you wanna take your fabric marker and you wanna trace those side holes of the washer, creating two lines, just like so. Then you wanna cut through those two lines using a seam ripper here, but just be careful not to overdone it. Then take your magnetic snap and insert those two prongs into the holes that we just created. And then you want to take your washer and insert that through the prongs, just like so. You want to use your thumbs to push the prongs towards the side to lock it in place. You may also use a pliers if you don't want to hurt your thumbs. And that's it. Now you can go ahead and work on the male part just the same way we did before. Then we're gonna work on the strap anchor. So take one piece of charm pack and you wanna trim this an inch off. 
Then you want to fold this in half and press. Open it up and then fold those edges towards the center fold and press just like so. And then you want to fold that again in a half. So you will end up with a 5 by 1 inch strip and you're going to go ahead and sew this all around with an eighth of an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done that, you want to cut this strip in a half. Alright, now you want to take your remaining five charm packs and we're going to make the strap out of this. So you want to piece them together just like so. Then you want to press the seams open. This is to make sure that the strap will lay flat. Now we're going to trim the width of this strip an inch off. So to make it easier, I'm just going to fold my strip in half here. Then I'm just going to line this up with one of the line of my cutting mat. Then with my ruler and my rotary cutter, I'm just going to cut this an inch away. Now you have a 23 inches by 4 inches strip of fabric. You will also need to cut an interfacing here. I'm using the fusible woven interfacing. So you will need to cut this interfacing 2 inches wide and 22 inches long. Place this on the center of your fabric. Glue side down, half an inch away from the edge here. Then you want to fuse that with an iron. Then you want to fold the edge here just like so and press that. And you want to do the same with the other side. Once you've done that, you want to fold this strip in half, just like so, and press. Open it up and then you want to fold the row edges here towards the center fold and press. Do the same the other side. Then you want to fold this piece in half again and you will end up with a 1 inch strip. Sew all around with 1 8 of an inch of seam allowance. And this is how your strap gonna turn out. Obviously guys, if you want your strap to be longer, you may add one or two extra charm pack. Next we are going to assemble the exterior shell of the bag. First we're going to draw two inches squares on each bottom corner here. This is to create the boxy corner of the bag. Once you've done that, you wanna go ahead and cut it with a scissor. Then you wanna do the same with the other side. Now lay your front and back exterior piece right side together. Secure them in place with some fabric clips or pins. Then sew the sides and the bottom here with half an inch of seam allowance. Once you've done sewing, you're going to work on boxing the corner here. You want to open this one up and match the seam here. You want to nest it together, just like so. And then you want to take your fabric clip to hold this together. Next, we're going to sew this with half an inch of seam allowance. And this is how your exterior shell gonna look like after boxing the corner. Now we're gonna turn this one inside out just to make sure that everything is looking good. Alright, I think it is looking great. You want to assemble your lining piece the same way you did the exterior piece. However, for the lining piece, you will need to leave about 4 inches of opening at the bottom here. Alright, now you're going to prepare your strap anchors and your D-rings and we're going to attach this on the back. Now take one of the strap and feed that through the hole of the D-ring. And then you want to place it on one of the sides of your back where the side seam here. But you want to make sure that the seam is open. It's just so it's not going to be extremely um, bulky. Then use your fabric clip to secure this in place. Alright, and then you want to do the same with the other side. Then we're going to sew them in place with quarter inch of seam allowance. 
Once you've got your exterior piece and your lining piece ready to go, it's time to put this back together. Now you want to turn your exterior piece back to the wrong side. Then you want to insert your lining piece into the exterior piece and you want to make sure that the right side of your lining and the right side of your exterior piece is touching each other. Also the front side of the lining should be touching the front side of the exterior and the back side of the lining is touching the back side of the exterior. Then you want to secure them in place with your fabric clips. Once you've done that, you want to sew this all around with half an inch of seam allowance. Since we are going to sew through some very bulky area, I suggest to change your needle first to a size larger. I recommend to use the jean size needle for this. Alright, once you've done sewing, we're going to turn this back inside out through the opening from the lining. Now I'm going to use my hair marker here to smooth the edges just to keep everything inside like so you can also use coin or your fingers or simply use iron all right now we are going to top stitch this all around all right once you've done top stitching you want to pull your lining out Find that opening hole at the bottom and then you want to sew that close. Once you've done that, you want to put your lining back inside. So we are going to the last step which is attaching the strap. Alright, now take one of the end of your strap, feed that to one of the D-ring. You want to do this from the outside to the inside, just like so. You want to have about one and a half inch of clearance right there. And then you want to sew two lines to secure this in place. You want to sew back and forth about three times to make sure that the strap is properly reinforced. And this is how it's going to turn out. So now you want to take your other end of the strap and fit that through the other side the same way we did before basically. So from outside to the inside and leave about one and a half inch of clearance and you want to make sure that your strap isn't twisted so double check again then you want to again sew two lines to secure this in place and voila so your strap is already attached and your bag is done and that's all I have for you today guys please leave me a comment down below if you have any question at all about this project thumbs up if you like this video and consider subscribing I post weekly fun sewing project and I shall see you next time with another sewing video. Goodbye!